Not, not for maybe for certain for certain people that you're really curious about. Like yeah. you have that kind of time for Bob Lazar. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but maybe not for Donald Trump. <laughs> no, that's different. Because Bob Lazar, what what you know, what he's talking about, like I wanted to know with the Bob Lazar thing, I wanted to know first of all, I want to be around him and see if I could smell bullshit. Did you? Like no. did okay. No, I didn't, man. That was what's weird about it. Not only did I not smell bullshit, I went over all of his interviews. I went over, he's he hasn't done a lot, but he's done enough. And he's done them over the course of 30 plus years and it's alarming how consistent his story is which is really weird when you think about you're talking about back engineering alien crafts and working on a, a you know a, a top secret government test site that's carved into the side of a mountain and to, to camouflage it from satellites it's a, it's such a wacky story but the guy really did work at Los Alamos Labs. He really is a propulsions expert. He really is a scientist. Um, did he really work on back engineering UFOs? I don't know. But the way he described their motion is exactly like what's been observed by uh, some of these pilots that have these videos that they've captured. And I just love that like NASA, I've been hearing from a bunch of folks who are, they're legitimately like funding research and there's people really taking the seriously of um ufo sightings investigating them yeah uh, like adding more and more sensors to collect data from just observing at yeah higher, higher definitions it's it's cool to finally see that and he was one of the early people whether he's full of shit or not that kind of forced people to start taking this kind of this, these topics seriously or at least force people to have conversations about them and maybe attempt to debunk them because it seems so preposterous, but then get sucked down the rabbit hole and start going, hmm, maybe. We'll fucking it's the thing is like the Fermi paradox. Like where are they, right? And when you take into account just the sheer raw numbers, the vast majority of people objectively assume that there is life out there. The vast majority. Well if if you really take into account what we understand about the universe itself, what we understand about the concept of, in, of infinity, and the way Neil deGrasse Tyson has explained it to me is that not only are there life forms out there, but there's you. You are out there. Infinity is so large that Lex Friedman exists and doesn't just exist, but exists an infinite number of times. Like the amount of interactions that cells and molecules the same exact interactions that have happened here on Earth have happened in the exact same order an infinite number of times in the cosmos. Well, first of all, it's not certain that that's true. It's, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, like Sean Carroll, you know, uh, especially with quantum mechanics, based on certain interpretation of quantum mechanics, that's, that's very possible. But the question is, can you access those universes right and, and so how far away are they the more the more sort of specific practical question is this local pocket of the universe our galaxy or our neighboring galaxies are there aliens there what do they look like right. are they so you can have this panspermia idea where a much larger like uh like daddy civilization <laughs> mm. uh like uh, rolled by and just planted a few aliens at a similar time. Like Prometheus. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a, a different, you know, throughout the galaxy. And those are the ones we might be interacting with. They're all kind of dumb mm -hmm. as we are, relatively, you know, maybe um, a few million years apart. And then those are the ones we're interacting with. And then we have a chance to actually connect with them and communicate with them. Or it could be like much more wide open and you have these gigantic alien civilizations that are expanding very, very quickly. And the interesting thing is when you look up at the sky and you see the stars, that's light from those stars. We might not be seeing the alien civilizations until they're already here. Meaning, right. like, like you start expanding, once you get really good at expanding, you're going to be expanding very close to the speed of light. So right now we don't see much in the, in the sky, but there could be one night, one day we wake up and it's just like, everywhere mm -hmm. and they're here right right because the amount of time the light takes to reach us yeah uh, and then the the thing that i've been really fascinated by is these alternative forms of transportation that they're discussing like the the ability to harness wormholes 
and the the ability to to do things that w- uh, 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 a type three civilization is capable of. I had Michio Kaku on my yeah, podcast recently. Yeah. Fantastic, love that guy. He's so he's so good at taking extremely complex concepts and boiling them down for digestion and and you know and saying them in a way that other people can appreciate and not being hesitant about saying wild crazy shit that's out there but grounded in what's actually possible yeah he's all in on this ufo phenomenon now he's now he's like now the burden of proof is to people for people to come up with some sort of a conventional explanation for these things he goes because these things are defying all the concepts of physics that that we we currently know in terms of what our capabilities are, and and propulsion systems and and so many other things that you know what we know about what current science is capable of reproducing as far as what we know. The problem is like uh, these um, military projects that are top secret. Like how much money do they have? They have a lot of money. Like but. Is it possible, and maybe you could speak to this, is it possible that there could be some propulsion systems that have been developed and implemented that are far beyond just the simple burning of rocket fuel, pushing the fire out the back, which forces the rocket at extreme speeds forward? That's something that does harness gravity, something that can distort space and time and can make travel from one point to another uh, like preposterously fast. Well, not only is it possible, I think it's likely that that kind of stuff would be kept a secret. Yeah. It's just everything you see about these, um, about the way either if it's contractors like Lockheed Martin or if it's DOD, the, the 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 actual departments of defense, they operate in complete secrecy. Just even looking at the the history of the stealth fighter, just even stealth technology was kept a secret for a very very long yeah. time, and not until you're ready to use it and need to use it does it become public and not officially public. It just is being detected out in the wild. Mm-hmm. So th- there's going to be a process where you're secretly testing it, and that might creep up which is maybe what we're seeing and then it's waiting for the next big war Mm. Uh, the the next big reason to use the thing yeah and and so yeah this there's definitely technologies now there might not be propulsion technologies there could be ai surveillance technologies that could be uh, different kinds of uh stealth drones there could be uh it could be also in cyberspace like cyber war weapons all that kind of stuff. That they're obviously going to be kept secret. I'm I'm very skeptical lately, and the reason why I'm skeptical is the government keeps talking about it. The Pentagon keeps talking about it. NASA keeps talking about it. In which direction are you skeptical? I'm skeptical that it's they're aliens. I think it, most likely it's a smokescreen, and yeah. most likely these are some sort of like incredibly advanced drones that they've developed that they want to pretend don't exist. That seems the more likely scenario, because otherwise, uh, my take is like, what's the benefit of them discussing these things? Like, what's the benefit of them discussing these things openly? These are, you know, what, what the way they described it, off-world crafts not made from this earth. Like, why? Why would they, why would they tell us that? I mean, unless there's an imminent danger of us being invaded. And they want to prepare people so they don't freak out as much, you know, like maybe freak them out a little bit, say that publicly, the New York Times article, the Pentagon d- discussing it, all these different things. Test happening. the waters. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let people know that this is a thing 